Hi, this is Dwyer, DwyerCrime.blog, RichardDwyer.co. This is part two of the video I'm doing on Mia Farrow, Woody Allen, the HBO docuseries. I encourage those of you who haven't listened to part one to listen to part one to get context. For me, it was extremely jarring. It let me know that I didn't know Woody Allen. To hear the tape recording of the telephone conversation that Woody had with his wife, Mia Farrow, after Mia discovered that Woody had been sleeping with her daughter, Sun Yi. Right, folks, it's jarring. Uh, Woody is so self-involved. Woody is so intentionally unaware of the impact he's having on the people around him that Woody in that conversation says to his wife Mia Farrow that he drifted, that's the word he uses, he drifted into a relationship with her daughter Sunni, right? Physical relationship. And he wants to reconcile. He's willing to leave Sun Yi to go back to Mia Farrow. Think about that. Think about the impact that would have had on Mia Farrow's daughter. Well, he's prepared to go back to his wife on the condition that the two of them appear at a press conference together. I wish I were making this up to dampen, to minimize the bad press Woody is getting for having slept with Mia's daughter. Folks, it's shocking. Absolutely shocking. Right? Woody, in the telephone conversation, is trying to convince Mia Farrow that it's possible to minimize the public relations damage, right? Woody is thinking of public relations. He's thinking of his career. Why would any wife want to take back a husband who has slept with their daughter, right? It's simply astonishing. Also keep in mind, Many of these events happened in the early 90s, 29 years ago. Woody is still with Sunni today, right? One wonders what her reaction is going to be to learn that her lover, after she literally betrays her mother, right? Now she's going to learn from this docuseries that her lover was willing to betray her, to return back to her mother. Right, folks, it's awful. Simply awful. Nowhere in the conversation that they play does Woody spend any appreciable period of time apologizing to Mia Farrow. We're trying to find out how Mia Farrow is doing emotionally. Right? The tape recording, to me, shows a level of narcissism that is simply jarring. Let me point out, too, on the series, they have narrations from Woody's own audiobook where Woody himself talks about his emotions and talks about his relationship with Sunni. Right? In those narrations, I'm not sure if Woody understands how self-involved, how narcissistic, how unempathetic he sounds. Right? He just flatly states that he wasn't that interested in Mia Farrow's children. Right? He didn't really want to be a father. 
Then, of course, Mia encourages him to be more of a father. Woody ultimately has a child with Mia, right? Ronan, Satchel was his uh, given name, and then later it evolved into Ronan, right? Woody also becomes attached to other kids and adopts them. But understand, Suni, Woody was always lukewarm to her by his own admission, in a way that's disconcerting. If you're a guy and you're going out with a woman who has kids, and you're around those kids and you understand the impact that adults have on children who are looking for mentors, who are looking for guidance, who, whether they know it or not, might need your guidance, might view you as a role model. You might be the adult male figure that they know best in their entire lives. And Woody is acting like they were pieces of furniture, right? My own opinion, based on his statements, right? It's as if he's dating Mia Farrow and she has a leather sofa. Right? You know, it's like, okay, well, that's her thing. I'd prefer cloth, but that's all right. As long as she knows, and the two of them have conversations, that he's not really in it to be a father. Well, Mia then convinces Woody to take Suni to New York Knick Games, which Woody does. Right? He tells you so in his narration. Then to his surprise, right? he's surprised by this. He actually enjoys the conversations with her at the game. They actually enjoy getting to know each other. Right, folks? It's, it's startling. You know, Woody really sounds... For a guy who makes very expressive movies, paradoxically, Woody comes across as emotionally handicapped. Let me say, too, the show is also noteworthy for the friends, family friends, who may not have seen Woody's behavior toward either seven-year-old Dylan, right, Dylan as she's growing up, right? Four, five, six, seven. Young Dylan. And Soon Yi, right? There are friends who see Woody and are concerned by Woody's controlling behavior. One of them is Carly Simon, who appears on the show. Now, Carly is very important because... Age-wise, she's a contemporary of Mia and Woody. She was around them for decades. And on the show, she tells you that at first, she thought they were a great couple. At first, she believed in Woody. But then, as she got to know Woody, she started to realize that Woody was extremely controlling. Well, understand, after you hear Woody talk about his wife, Mia Farrow, acting in his movies, and they made several movies together, you understand that Woody doesn't view those movies as their movies which they made together as husband and wife. He doesn't view it as a partnership, right? Woody sounds like he's talking about an employee that he's just met, right? He starts talking about Mia Farrow's acting ability, the role she can play in a way that is disconcerting, right? Folks, there's no warmth there. You, you don't get the feeling that 
Mia Farrow and Woody are anything other than people in a business relationship. That seems to be how Alan viewed it. Right? Not as a couple creating things together. No, Mia is just another person on the set. So let me just say, I was jarred by the series, jarred by the personalities. I understand there is a Woody Allen side of the argument. Understand Woody and Mia had a son, Moses. Right, I should say have a son, Moses. Moses now seems to be on Woody's side, right? Moses contends that he was present at times. When Mia, intentionally or unintentionally, seemed to coach daughter Dylan about events that may or may not have happened to her involving Woody Allen, right? Moses apparently was there. Moses now believes in his father. Let me also point out something else. There's some information we simply don't know. Suni was adopted. She was homeless at the time she was adopted. It's unclear what her date of birth is. Right? There are those who believe, and I believe this is what a court concluded, that Woody and Soon Yi did not start having an adult relationship until she was 21 years old. Right now, on the show, they talk about her being in high school and the maid for Woody Allen finding condoms after Soon Yi would visit her father right after school. Right, the implication is that Woody and Soon Yi were intimate while she was still a high school student. Right, just understand and do the research yourself. The date of birth is an issue, right? She may have been an older high school student as it is. Understand Woody contends that the relationship didn't start until she was a freshman in college, right? But here again, the lack of empathy, the emotional unawareness is completely out there. How could a grown man, with all the women in New York City, how could a grown man decide to cheat on his wife with her daughter? Worse yet, it doesn't even sound like Woody was just hopelessly in love, unable to control his emotions. Given the tape recording, of his telephone conversation with Mia where he talked about a reconciliation. So two episodes in, I'm riveted. I realize now that I did not know Woody Allen. I realize now that there are third party witnesses to some of his behavior involving Dylan. Right? That's profoundly disturbing. Again, understand. Some of these third-party witnesses are professionals, right? Others are babysitters, people who were there to watch the kids, who would pay attention to behavior that was outside the norm, right? Then, of course, you have the situation of Woody's emotional flatness, in his telephone conversation with Mia Farrow, in his statements to people on the show, which they quote him on, right? Regarding his actions toward Dylan, for example. 
right? And in his own book narration, where he discusses his relationship with Sun Yi. The fact that he really wasn't enamored of the idea of being involved in the lives of Mia Farrow's kids, at least not at first, and in his discussions about working with his wife on several movies. Folks, it's riveting stuff. I hope you give it a look. Let me know what you think. I understand there are many points of view here. I understand there are defenders of Mia Farrow. There are defenders of Woody Allen. Right? I understand there are some factual disputes about what happened, whether Woody Allen did go up to the attic with Dylan, what happened in the attic, right? Whether or not Dylan's statements on film were coached. I understand there are differing points of view. Exactly what Sunni's ages. Exactly what happened between her and Woody while she was in high school. Let me hear your comments on any aspect of this situation that you wish to comment upon. I hope you leave those comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thank you for stopping by.